Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 2193, minimum number of moves to make palindrome. Before we get into it, remember to drop a like and a comment. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And also, if you haven't already, join the Discord channel. I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, let's read the question prompt. You are given a string S consisting of lowercase English letters. In one move, you can select any two adjacent characters of S and swap them. Return the minimum number of moves needed to make S a palindrome. Note that the input will be generated such that there always can be a palindrome made from S. So let's look at our input here, where we're given AABB. Obviously, this isn't a palindrome, right? And the two palindromes we can make are ABAB. Oh, sorry, not that. <laughs> Whoops. We can make ABBA or we can make uh, B A A B, right? These are both palindromes because the A's match and the B's match. And then here the B's match and the A's match. So if we have our original string, what are the ways that we can actually form those? Well, we can um, you know, swap this B here. And remember, we're only allowed to make one swap at a time because they have to be adjacent. So we could swap the A and the B. So we'd have A, B, A, B, and then we'd have to swap this one, uh, which gives us A, B, B, A. So remember, that's one palindrome we can make, but we could also do B, A, A, B. So let's try to form that one. So what we would do here is we would swap this one, these, this B with this A. So now we'd have A, B, A, B again. And now what we could do is we can swap these two, which gives us um, B, A, A, B, right? And that is our palindrome. So in this one, we had two swaps. And in this one, we also had two swaps. So that's the total number of swaps we can have. So looking at it, it's actually quite simple uh, to do it on paper, but writing an algorithm to do it is a little bit trickier. So let's kind of erase some of this uh, text here and some of this basic example and think about how we could do this uh, for basically any cases and especially the more complicated ones. So we looked at a basic example, but now let's think about how we want to solve this, right? So we had our word and let me bring my pencil back. So we had our word, right? It was like A, B, A, B. So let's say we had more characters, right? A, B, A, B, whatever. Now, what's one thing to notice? If let's just say we had an extra A here, we know that um, you know these A's will match. So basically, they don't need to move in terms of building a palindrome, right? We're trying to shift this so it's a palindrome. So if the characters at the end already match, then we don't have to worry about them. So we can kind of just forget about them, right? If they match, then all we have to worry about is the middle part. So now we have B, A, B, A, B, A, B. And now these characters match. So we don't have to move anything again. So we can get rid of them. We can pretend like it's an even easier problem. So now we have A, B, A, B, A, right? So then we have, you know, the A's here, which match. So we can basically just keep making this into a smaller problem as long as the letters on the end match. That way we only have to shift whatever's inside of it, which basically re reduces the amount of like spaces we have to shift. So this is the general gist of our algorithm, right? What we want to do is given a string, we don't want to be moving two characters into place. All we're going to do is we're going to check whatever the last uh, element here is at the end. And we're basically going to find another instance of that character. And we're going to see how many moves we need to uh, move it such that it moves to the beginning. That way, basically, these two will cancel each other out and we'll just make all of those swaps. So I think in this question, uh, this is a bad uh, example because we actually have uh, multiple characters here of the same ones. But the general gist is that we want to move uh, one character to the end such that it matches whatever the end character is. Therefore, we can just pretend like the, the end already matches. So all we need to do is the inside. And we'll basically just keep doing this process until you know we've basically rearranged our whole string. So that's all we're going to do. Now, how many moves is that going to take, right? Whatever the index of the, you know, character that we find, so say it's an A, say one of the A's that we find, let's just say this is a C. If this is where we find it, so this is going to be at index what? So this is 0, 1, 2. 
the index will actually tell us how many moves we need to actually get it to the end, right? So we'll do you know two moves to actually move it to the beginning. So that would be two added to our total sum of moves that we've had to make to make this into a palindrome, right? Now, there is one edge case, which what happens when there's a single character, right? So what if we had a string like, I don't know, oops, where's my pen? Um, and hello, what if we had like D, A, C, D, A, right? This C is a problem. Uh, now it's not because it's in the middle, which actually gives us a hint as to how we want to solve this. But if this string was D, A, A, D, C, then this C is a problem. Why? Because it's at the end here. But when we search for whatever the other C is to check if it's a palindrome, we're actually not going to find any C. So what we need to do is if a character has only a count of one in our string, it needs to move into the middle, right? We need to make it into this form where we actually have the character in the middle. Then from there, we can make our palindrome, right? We can see D, A, C, A, D, and then we'd be good to go. So whenever a character has only a count of one, we want to move it into the middle. Otherwise, we can do our palindrome trick, and this will apply to any odd counts. But if it's greater than one, obviously with three, you know, we could have a C at the end and those would kind of cancel each other out. And then we could have that last C in the middle. So those are your two cases, basically where you have, um, you know, a character and there is another character that exists in the array. So you just need to move one of them to the front because we're always going to be going off at the end here. Or in the case that the character at the end is actually univalue and it's the only one inside of the string, then we just want to move it to the middle, in which case it's going to take whatever the index is here. So whatever this is the length of the string minus one, we're just going to divide that by two. And that's how many moves otherwise, because obviously we're just going to the, the literal middle of the string. Otherwise, we're just going to use whatever the index is of our string that we found and to move it to the front. Remember, it's just going to be I moves. So if this doesn't really make sense, kind of think about it. It is kind of essential that you understand this part. It's quite easy to implement it in code, so there's not really any tricks here. Uh, but understanding how it works in terms of like moving the string when there's more than one value and then dealing with the case um, where the last character actually is a uni value and it needs to move to the middle. Those are your only two cases you have to worry about. And it's quite simple. So what I want to do now is actually go to the code editor and let's type this up. Okay, So we are in the code editor. Let's type this up. I'll do my best to go over the code nice and slow to help you guys understand it. This one is a bit tricky if you can't visually um, kind of see how things work, but hopefully walking you through this should help a lot. So we want to be able to modify our string here. And obviously strings are immutable uh, in Python. Technically, they are immutable, but you make a copy each time. So to avoid that, we're just going to create a uh, list out of our string. So that way we can uh, modify it as we like and we don't have to worry about any sort of copying. So we're going to basically uh, create a, a list out of our string, which is just going to take each character and put it into um, you know, a list. So we need a result to basically store the number of moves that we made. And now we actually need to process our string. And what we're going to do is we're going to say while we still have something to process. So while S basically has some elements, remember that we're going to check what the last element in our array is, which is that last character in the string. And we're going to find the first occurrence of that same character. So we're going to say I equals S dot index of whatever that last character is, right? So S of minus one is the last character here. Uh, and then S dot index will basically just find the first leftmost occurrence of this character. So remember, if this index I actually equals the length of S minus one. So if it's the length of S minus one, that's actually the last character in the string, which means that obviously the leftmost character is the last one. So therefore, there's only one of that character in the string, which means that we mo need to move that character to the middle of our um, array here, right to it may actually make it into a palindrome. But we're not actually going to be moving it. We're just going to be counting the amount of steps it would take. So obviously, to move it to the middle is going to cost what uh, I divided by two, right? Because we just need to move it halfway. So if I is the last index in the array, 
then halfway will just be that last index divided by two. So we add that to the results because that's how many moves we need to make to swap it. Remember, we can't just swap index for index. We have to swap two adjacent ones. So it'd have to go from like the last element to the last element minus one and then keep going uh, swapping one by one until we get to the middle. So that's why we have to add them. We can't just swap it directly, right? So that's the case if there's only one uh, occurrence of whatever the last character in our uh, array here is. But if there, we actually found one, then what we need to do is just move that character. Uh, basically, think of it as moving it to the front. So that way, the front and the back of our string will match. And basically, that part of the palindrome will be satisfied, right? So all we would need to do in that case is just move however many uh, points. So for example, if our thing was like, uh, uh, a, D, C, A, D, C, right? We want the C to match. So we want to move our index C to the front. So this would be like swapping C and the D, and then we would swap the C and the A. So that took two swaps, which is actually conveniently whatever the original index of our, um, you know, character was. So that is why we add I. And now what we need to do is we actually need to get rid of that character. So obviously, the idea is to put the character at the front and the back such that we no longer have to worry about the um, the character, right? But we're not actually moving it in the string. We're just going to get rid of it from wherever it is, right? So we're going to say s.pop of whatever that ith index is to remove it from the string because we don't actually want to do the operations to move it and then pop it. There's no point. We'll just pop it. We've already accounted for the, all the moves that we need to make. The last thing we need to do is now that the front, the first character and the last character match, obviously now we don't have to worry about them anymore. We just have to make the smaller characters in the middle match, which is kind of like the divide and conquer algorithm here. So all we need to do is just pop that last character to remove it from our uh, string here and we don't have to worry about it anymore. And once this while loop breaks, all we need to do is simply oops, uh, return, return our result here and we're done. So let's uh, how do I submit this? Let me just make sure I haven't made any syntax mistakes. Cool. It seems to be fine. And let's submit this and we're good to go. Accepted. So let's go back here and actually think about our time and space complexity. So let's do the uh, space complexity first because it's actually the easier part. So we need to actually just make our string into a list, which is obviously going to take big O of n time because the string is of length n and we have to transform it into a list. So we need the list, which now is going to have n elements in it. Uh, we can't get around this part, even if we did try to make the modifications in place in the string, uh, doing any sort of uh, pop. It, well, we can't pop from a string, first of all, so that wouldn't work. Um, and even if we could, it would still have to rearrange the string or make some sort of copies behind the scenes. Anyway, I'm rambling here. It doesn't matter. Uh, the space is big O of n and the time here. So uh, potentially we could have to swap basically half of the characters in our string here, which is going to take, you know, big O of n over two uh, time to actually process, you know, half of those characters that we need to do, because obviously then the other half would be in place. Um, but because we have this pop of i, which is an o of n operation, um, base, oops, our time, our time complexity here is, at, Jesus Christ, what is going on? Uh, time complexity here is actually going to be big O of n squared, space complexity, big O of n. So relatively straightforward problem. I mean, as you can see, this is like very little lines of code, especially for a hard level question. I think it's quite tricky to come up with this. Definitely one of those where if you see the solution, it immediately clicks and you should be fine. But coming up with this on your own is quite tricky. I'm not going to lie. I had to look at the solution myself, but I think it's quite simple uh, and intuitive why this works. And if you think about how, you know, palindromes basically are like those characters need to match. And once they've matched, I mean, you don't have to worry about those characters anymore. It's just whatever is in the middle, you need to uh, move around. And since we're guaranteed that this palindrome can be made into a palindrome, um, you're basically good to go. Anyway, that is how you solve this problem. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment, even if it's a random comment, not even related to the video, it doesn't matter. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. You guys have no idea. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to join the discord community link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.